Welcome back, everybody. It is time to play What's It Worth, our weekly game, when we ask antiques expert Dr. Lori the value of five items from the PTL mailbox. And we have to tell you, thanks to everyone who wrote in asking where Dr. Lori was last week. Uh, Dr. Lori, you have such a loyal fan base here. I mean, we knew that to begin with because we get probably the most emails about you and appraising items. But it was, we were blown away by the messages. You really are loved here. Well, thank you. I love Pittsburgh very much. The Home and Garden Show has been great to me, and so has PTL for a long time. So I appreciate that. And it was similar with the, the information from my YouTube channel, because I teach people tricks and tips and secrets so they can make money reselling art and antiques on the YouTube channel. And, and here we get to talk about actual objects from actual people and tell Pittsburgh stories. I'm very lucky to be able to do that with both of you, so thank you. Well, we thank love you it. All. And I'm glad that you brought up the Home and Garden Show because it's actually where PTL met you. Yeah. And, and yes. the cancellation, early cancellation of, of the Home and Garden Show is what led to you being a weekly guest here. Well, yes. You know, we had a great Home and Garden Show last year to start. We had a little bit of problems, of course, with the pandemic at the end of the show, but the Home and Garden Show always brings together the best of the best. Uh, they work very, very tirelessly to do that, and I'm always very proud to be part of it, and with all of you. All right, so let's jump in, and we have a lamp yeah. from Evelyn. Evelyn sent in this lamp. It's hand-painted. It's glass, and it's from the middle part of the 1960s with those roses on it. I will confess that there were a couple of these lamps in my home growing yes. up as yes. well. Yes, this looks They're very familiar to my childhood. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. They're relatively common. You'll notice, of course, um, the base, which is a, uh, a cast uh, metal. And then the globes are, of course, and the shade are hand-painted, cased glass with a hurricane in the middle. You turn that little knob and the electric lamp goes on. Now, is there anything about w what maker of this or, or where it was made that would make it more expensive than the ones most we all these, saw growing up? Most of these are made by either... Uh, Bradley and Hubbard, Buell and Howell, some of them are made uh, in Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts, uh, uh, New, New Bedford, Mass, those, those places. They're distributed all over the United States. They're pretty straightforward. You have a little nuances of change with respect to the painting. You know, the, mm -hmm. the roses might be a little different from the one that was in your bedroom growing up or the one that was in my bedroom growing up, but they're pretty common lamps from the middle 1900s. Okay. Do you have a guess? Uh, I was hoping she'd give like a key word. Like sometimes she'll say like extremely rare or so, something like that. And then I'm like, oh. I just heard common over and over and over again. Yeah. So I oh, went, okay. I went $55. <laughs> See, I went higher than that. I went $150. Worth $75. Oh, okay. There you go. You're off and running. I do remember that lamp, though. Oh, yeah. Like my my yeah, grandmother exactly. had one. Lots of people there did, There were yeah. many of them made. Yeah. Okay. Well, the next item is from Jean, and it says it's a Hershey doll, but I don't know what that is, Dr. Lori. Well, in the 1980s, if you went to Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania, you could buy a bittersweet doll. It was a throwback to an advertising campaign of the early 1900s, and there were only a 1,000 of them made. This one is actually marked number 33 of 1,000. So Jean went to Hershey Park in the 80s and she bought the doll for part of her doll collection. You'll notice that the little boy has uh, a little bee on his nose. So the idea is about bittersweet chocolate that you would bake with, right? And mm -hmm. that was, this is basically the, the 1980s revival of that advertising icon. Now, it looks like there's some papers attached or something. Is yeah. that part of... The doll, or is that like she left some sort of authentication on it or something that can make no, it worth that's more? The, that's the part of the doll. It doesn't okay. make it worth more. It's good if you keep tags on pieces. If you have a piece you want to keep the tags mm -hmm. on it, that's a good idea for any object. Keep paperwork with it if you can. But in the 1980s, what they did was they actually put a tag on it that re replicated what was going on in the early 1900s with advertising for the Hershey Chocolate Company. Uh, and those tags also have information and a name about the 1980s era doll maker that made that doll. Okay. All right, are you ready? It seems like you're ready. I am, just yeah. drawing. Are you drawing ready? little? Ready. I, drew, I, I drew, I wrote $100. <laughs> I also drew a smiley face. But I also wrote $100 in a rare move. We match, Dr. Lori. 
I bow to you both because it's worth one hundred dollars. No kidding. Fan. Right on. Fantastic. All right. Awesome. So Heather is still ahead, uh, but we will see how this works out coming up after the break. Don't go anywhere, Dr. Lori. We're going to be right back with more items. And don't you go anywhere. PTL will be right back after this commercial break.